Good afternoon. <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody. Oh my goodness, we've been running around. <laughs> that was quite epic. It was quite epic. It was quite epic running around today. So I've just been messing on the table, all sorts of things going on. How are you? I'm oh, there's okay. a big... <laughs> hmm? Oh, the big roll of stuff behind me. I just said to Amy, what's in the background? She said, that's my job to look at what's in I the didn't background. Do that. Stop it! Why are you doing that? <laughs> I didn't notice that. Oh. So, do say hello if you're watching. How are you all? It's lovely to be back again. I know it's been, I think it's been three weeks since we were here last. We had a bit of a um, running around week last week, so we didn't have time to join you last week, but uh, we're here this week. So, do say hello if you're watching. It's always nice to catch up with you on a Friday. Oh, hi Suzanne, how are you? Hi Suzanne. Nice to see you. Suzanne was on our sew along last night. We're still making our pea coat, but you can see mine in the in construction behind me. Looking good. Everyone's was looking really good, wasn't it, last night, Suzanne? They're all looking great. Once we got past the collar dilemma, <laughs> which was fun. So we've had a really busy time the last uh, few weeks, actually. Lots of classes going on. What have I done since I last saw you? Had the um, overlocker class, making little bags on the overlocker and decorative stitches. Had a um, corset making workshop, makes atelier wrap dress, which was really good fun. It's always a good one. It's, it just suits everybody, that dress. If anyone's made that before, you'll know. Oh, hi, Ruth. Oh, we missed you last night. <coughs> Hello, Catherine. Hi, Ruth. Nice to see you. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. Susan. Last night. Oh, hi, Catherine. Uh, someone on Instagram saying, hello, beautiful queen. Oh. Hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we did, uh, what else did we do? Uh, corset making, wrap dress, copy it, make it we've been doing this week. We finished at five o'clock today, which is why we've been rushing around to, uh, to come and join you. Um, uh, I think, yes, isn't it funny how, I thought the, the, thought the raw edge one would be easier, didn't we, Suzanne? But actually, that one was more tricky. Not tricky, but unusual way of construction, but we worked it out. Hi, Jill, how are you? You. Um, Hi, Jill. I do have an apology to. I do have an apology to make to the sew along ladies. Oh, I forgot to press record on the sew along last night, um, so I'll be sending you a written um, written recap of what we did last night instead of a recording. So I'm really sorry. Um, the first time I've done it, and the whole time we've been doing uh, sew alongs, the first time I've forgotten to press record. So I am sorry about that, but I will send you a, a recap anyway, so you'll know what to do. There's no homework anyway. So, yeah, sorry to Ruth and Jamie who weren't there last night and uh, Sandra who had to leave early. But um, anyway, you'll soon catch up. We'll do a recap next week as well. Uh, on Instagram, uh, I think it's Sonman and then it's a lot of letters. You've said, do you have any classes in, but in what? In what? In where? What's the end of your sentence? Yeah, missed that. <laughs> um, yeah, so we did the Peacoat. We're on week three now of that. Uh, which is really good. At least Collagate won't be recorded. <laughs> yeah, there was Collagate last night. Collagate between, the, yes, upside down collars, wrong way round collars, raw edge collars, all sorts of things. <laughs> it's because everyone's doing slightly different versions of the jacket. So, um, ah. oh no, Janet's picture's frozen. Hi Janet, how are you? Seems to be all right here. Yeah, don't worry, Ruth. I will. I've, I've already, already started writing a recap of what we did last night, so it's absolutely fine. Um, you'll be fine. I've made lots of notes, so I'll send that out later this evening, so you'll get the recap. We haven't done. We haven't done loads, as you can see. This is where we're up to. We did. We put the band on the back, put the seams on the back, and just started the collar. So, don't you worry. Oh, hi Claire. How are you? Received an exciting parcel today. Did you, Claire? What was that? <laughs> Do tell us. <laughs> Cynthia is here on Instagram. Oh, hi Cynthia, how are she you? She says, can I send you a photo of my lapels so you can tell me whether I have to correct, yes. have it correct. Yes. Sorry, I was so slow with it. Yes, do send me a picture, Cynthia. I'm sorry, we were. Uh, there was a bit of confusion last night about which way round to do things. Um, and I will do a sample here as well of that, of your raw edge one, um, and take some pictures of what it should look like as well to send out with the... Um, uh, to send out with the recap, which isn't the recording, <laughs> it's just a different version. There'll be pictures. Hi, oh, Sally. Hi, Sally. How Finally are you? finished the Linton Tweed bag. Oh, it's beautiful. 
uh, my birthday present ordered from you by my daughter. Oh, we good. We did think, didn't we? We were like, a mole. Thought that was for you. Surname, <laughs> <and> mole. <Yeah. laughs> oh, I hope you like it. Very useful, I would say. A very useful present for you. Now, my screen has fell. Is it freeze on there just because I was sliding down the thing? So, all right, you have to bring your bag in on Tuesday, Sally, so we can have a look for afternoon school. Sally was doing the, the bag that she started making with Sue in the bag workshop with the lovely chain handles. And um, while we're talking about bag workshop, we've got a new date in for a bag workshop uh, with the lovely Sue Cotton. So if you fancy making a bag, they can choice of uh, three different styles of bag and, and or you can make the utility belt with all the different pockets in it. And that's on the 17th of March. So whole day workshop um, and Sue provides the pattern and uh, she has all the different bag uh, findings and things so you don't have to worry about trying to find those anywhere else um, so yes in fact making a bag workshop 17th of March that's on the website now so do have a look oh I haven't seen oh yes I did see those Susan weren't they lovely really nice bags posted by Linton this week Amy and I might have called in there on Monday maybe <laughs> we took a little trip to Carlisle. There may be uh, with some bags that came out with maybe. us. Maybe. We suddenly have some more Linton in the sewing room. Um, <laughs> yeah, we went up to Carlisle last week. Oh, we weekend. should have done show and tell. Yeah, oh yes. That's a secret, only for those who book on the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could do that actually. I have um, a couple of nice bits of Linton. We popped up to Carlisle, just popped up for the weekend, uh, to just to, to stay at the lovely hotel that we're going to be having our retreat in. Uh, in um, May. May, isn't it? Yeah, May. So uh, Amy will talk to you more about that when she comes in about all the retreat updates. But the hotel for that one is beautiful. And we had lovely food and everything, didn't we? So we were wind and dine. We were wind and dine. I dined. had to break dry January that evening. Yes. Because I couldn't have a lovely meal without the wine. Oh, Obviously. Just... Cynthia, you're going to love the wine list, by the way. I did. I said Cynthia that the night. Oh, did you? I said, <laughs> Amy thought of you when she saw the wine list. I did. <laughs> we're going to have great fun yes. working our way through that. <laughs> It's a beautiful hotel, it's really lovely. What's the group? I couldn't remember the name of the hotel group. Oh, it's not a group, but oh, it's no. um, affiliated with Relay and Chateau. Oh, Relay and Chateau. It's a Relay and Chateau hotel, yeah. That's but it. it's a independent yeah. business. But it's, yes, it's, it's affiliated, doesn't it? So it yeah. has to be a certain standard. It has to be a certain standard, yeah. yeah. Anybody that knows of Relay and Chateau will know what we're going to be expecting. Very nice. So that's right. I know the sacrifices, Susan. It is really a sacrifice. Terrible. I had yes. to taste the wine just in case. Yes. And we also had to have all three courses at dinner. We did. And breakfast. <laughs> and breakfast. The next morning. And we had sandwiches when we got there. We did. <laughs> and I said, do you want cakes? And we can't have cakes. <laughs> we, could, we could have cakes. It's a tough life being yes. a vet. But we had pudding instead. <laughs> but yes. And so we had to, and we also had to double check the distance from the hotel to Linton. We course. did. So Even though I'd already checked that, but of course Mum had to check it also. <laughs> Let's double check it. She didn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so it was very nice to visit Linton and, and have a lovely chat with the people there as well. So that was good. You need to go on a dollop beforehand. Why is that? It doesn't matter. You can make things to fit you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi Helen. How are you? Poor Helen fell Aww. over and fractured her shoulder. Oh, hopefully. Let's oh, hope, hope you're right. feeling better by Brighton. Yes. Oh, I hope you're okay, Helen. It must be so painful, you poor thing. Uh, on, a, on a good on good news, though, I did manage to sell your both weeks for you, so I have got some money for you. <laughs> I've sold your place on both weeks, so um, we'll have a chat about whether you want to keep it in credit or re refund it to you. Thinking the same, Suzanne. <laughs> Dieting before. For that lovely food, you can't miss out on the food when we're there. Yeah, you've got to have three courses every kind of, day. day. Breakfast, breakfast were lovely, canapes were lovely, weren't they? they as were. well. The whole shebang. Very nice. So, um, I, oh, I ain't going to talk to you about places and things. Yeah, I'll do all that. Yeah, I'll move on to other things. So that was just what <laughs> we did last weekend. That was lovely. And I've, um, I've uh, got a nice new cars to test drive, so that was lovely. Nice little trip up and down. I said, well, how long did it take us? Was it six, six hours? Six hours. Six hours from here. Um, so Actually, on the way back, it was six hours with stops. Yeah. We were flying yes, back, yeah. yeah. And we weren't, you know, we weren't speeding or anything, just nope. going, yeah, just, you know, just trying out the new car. It's quite a nice, easy drive. It's just the M6 the entire mm. way. Yeah, exactly. And we had to stop at Tea Bay Services, of course. We did. Had to buy some nice fudge sweets, even though we just had breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we're on diets now as well. So that's what we did last week, and then have lots of workshops, like I said. Um, this weekend we have Wendy Gardens going to be here this weekend, teaching the body double, creating your own body double, so you can have a dress form, a mirror image of your body. I know some of you have done that before. Oh, poor Helen saying, unbelievable pain. Oh, I'm so sorry, Helen. That's awful. Why do you have lots of good painkillers? It's just they can't, can they strap it? Is it strapped up? That's good. You probably strap it up. You'd have to cast your whole yeah. body, wouldn't you? I mean, you? I had a sort of small, you know, with my shoulder pain, um, nothing compared to what you've got, but it is the most ridiculous pain and so debilitating. So I do feel for you. I mean, mine wasn't broken, but, you know. Oh, awful. So, yes, there's, uh, Wendy's going to be here this weekend teaching the body double workshop. She's got six lovely legs on that. Next week, what we got? We have the start of the Couture Jacket Sew Along. There's still time to mm -hmm. join. There's still spaces on the Sew Along. Um, you could, this is one of the jacket I made on the last Sew Along. This one here, which is a nice um, sparkly linen. You're going to have to stand up um, and do it up. So it's got corner. <laughs> I did, I did um, an edge to edge one this time. So it's got um, corset hooks at the front here. So instead of doing. With my last one I did all hand stitched buttonholes, so this time I thought I would do something different. It looks different. so lovely when it's done up. Yeah, so I did it like um, with corset hooks, like that. So just as a, as a bit of a change. So I could wear it like a little top. So that's my jacket. Um, and I did, uh, I've got little press studs. I did some fancy press studs on the, um, let's get up and have do that. I'll undo that, there we go, look. So I've got fancy press studs on there as well. So something just a bit different. So if you would like to make something, uh, this is a Linton that I'm wearing. Um, if you would like to join us for the sew along starting on Wednesday. Thank you, Janet. I'm really pleased with it. It's lovely. They're so comfortable. This this uh, this is uh, a Chanel style jacket. So it's like a cardigan jacket, but you can make anything. Use any patterns uh, that you like. If you wanted to use some of this sort of fabric, but work with a different pattern, that's absolutely fine. You don't. This is the Claire Shaper pattern. Uh, so it's a sort of a real replica of a, a Chanel jacket. But you could, um, Susan says I love the hooks. Yeah, it's just a slight, slight change, isn't it? I wanted to do something different from the, original, the one I did before. So it's nice to sort of change it up a little bit. But yes, you could, you know, you can really, um, the sew along is to really show you how to work with these sort of fabrics and learn some couture techniques. And I think we've got, it's 10 till four um, over a few weeks. Uh, so you get the chance to really learn to work with the fabrics. We make it along together, do quilted lining. Only one or two days a week, not yeah, every no, day. No, not, not every day, no. And then we have a bit of a gap in between. Um, so, yeah, so Sally's on the class. She's going to make a three-quarter length jacket. So if I just open it up, you can see that it's got a quilted lining. You can see the hooks and it's got a like, chain at the bottom. I've got a black chain in the bottom of my one here. Because it's so light, there's no interfacing in it. Um, it's very light, very lightweight. Um, so just to give it a bit of, so it, it hangs nicely, you put chain in the bottom. Cynthia says, looks great. Thank is you. it a Claire Schaefer from Vogue? It is, yes, it's the Claire Schaefer pattern. The one the, with the red jacket With the red jacket on the pattern. So it's a real, absolute, you know. I feel like it's 9004. I think it might be. But then that might like be that. completely wrong. <laughs> because the drape front top is 9006. <laughs> uh, Sally um, says she's going to make a three quarter length jacket. Yes, that's right. Which will be mm. exactly the same, but a bit longer. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, is the lining silk, Cynthia says? It's silk crepe de chine, yes. It's a silk crepe de chine. So when you're doing the quilted lining, you put a black thread on the top and a turquoise thread underneath and you just... And when you, by quilting the two layers together, it just makes it feel really lovely. It's very lightweight, but it's still quite warm, even though it's... Uh, Suzanne too, is making a summer one this time. Oh, that'd be lovely. Yes, because Suzanne made a lovely black one with, with the metallic threads and things. It's really pretty. So yeah, if, you still, if you'd like to join us, it's still time to join us because the first, although we're starting on Wednesday this week, we're only going to be starting with an introduction, getting the pattern sorted, um, and then all of the... Oh, 8804, eight, 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 right. Oh, I got the 04 right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Susan. So this one, yeah, is Vogue 8804, the Claire Shaver pattern. Um, but yes, there's still time to join, uh, and we always send out an introduction video as well, just to sort of give you an idea. Uh, where to start and all the sew alongs are recorded so if you you know you don't have to worry about trying to keep up every week you can just sort of work at your own pace um, and then you have a few days in between to catch up so yeah please do join us it's a really good fun because it because it's all most of it's hand sewing and we do lots of trace tacking and things we have a lovely chat <laughs> don't we Suzanne Suzanne did it last year it's the sort of thing that 
it's a lot of hours involved and it's um lots of hand sewing like i say and tacking so it's nice to do it with other people so even on zoom <laughs> so do join us for the uh the chill jacket sew along starting next week i can't believe it's come around already we wanted to make it an annual thing on instagram there's a um a thing called the january jacket and every january people photograph they start making their new couture jacket on the 1st of January and they photograph their progress and we thought well we'll do a February jacket start making it in February and I'll sew along so I've mentioned the mentioned the couture jacket next weekend we are doing sewing with Marfi patterns which I think I told you about before Marfi patterns are the Italian pattern brand uh, and their patterns come on a sort of tracing paper with no seam allowances no instructions Hi Jilly. So, oh hi Jilly, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're all okay. Uh, we were just talking about how Amy and I had a little trip up to Carlisle to check out the hotel for our couture retreat in May, which is going to be great. Very nice, you're going to love it. Uh, yeah, so Marky Patterns Workshop next weekend, um, which is good fun because we have to, I, I do it as an introduction to Marky, so I just give you the option of three patterns, so but they do lots of beautiful patterns Marfie but once you know how to work with them you'll be away you'll love them we're also doing uh, trousers next week as well Suzanne's coming over for the trouser workshop which will be lovely really excited about that it's lovely nice to see you Suzanne it'll be great I uh, mentioned the new bag workshop what else have I been looking at oh I've been keeping an eye there's been lots going on on the Midhurst sewers oh so much so much the last up. three it's fantastic you've all been so busy Justine's been making her beautiful lingerie, lots of pretty, pretty uh, lingerie sets. Margaret, Margaret made uh, an apron from a Laura Ashley curtain sample she got when Laura Ashley were closing down. Really pretty. And she also made a um, Fitzroy blouse, which is a, is a Lisa and Co blouse with a nice collar. Hi Sharon. Um, oh, uh, hi Sharon. Nice to see oh, you. Oh, and hi Catherine. Hi Catherine. Catherine's asking, can everyone see Claire? My video is just in a swirl. Oh, am I swirling? Yeah. Well, I mean, they were able to see you. Yes. Last time um, we had some problems on the live feed, but when I when I played it back, it was fine. And when I put it onto YouTube, it was fine as well. So I don't know if it's individual people's um, Instagram. I don't know. Very odd indeed. Oh, I hope you get to get to do a, do a um, refresh or turn it off and on again, Catherine. That's what we always say, isn't it? Well, Sharon <laughs> says yes, very clear. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, Suzanne can see us as well. So it's just one of those weeks when it's different internet in different places so what else was been going on janet made the lovely cordelia dress by so um so me something i think that is but wasn't it i think uh, janet that was really lovely with the um twist at the front tanya put a picture up of her wrap dress that she made on the workshop which was really nice with the black contrast band um sally showed us her beautiful silk shirt the white silk shirt with the covered buttons from harlequin really lovely I think it was hard for him to do the button. But that's beautiful. That, I know that um, Sally worked really hard on that. It was a very tricky fabric, but beautiful, that shirt. And that was the oversized shirt by the by assembly line patterns. Really nice pattern. Um, oh, it was, yes. Janet's just got to hem it. That won't take you long. Um, Esther, put the, well, we could, Esther put the picture of the corset she made on the workshop, which was great. That was such a good, fun workshop. And also the lovely Christing outfits. Uh, she's been made, she made for um, her godson, I think it was. Uh, she made the little little boy in the dungarees. Really cute. Really cute. Yeah, really cute. And cute. Esther also makes the Luna Lapan uh, animals. And she bought some in here actually, and all the clothes, beautiful. She's so good at them, really good. Suzanne's also been busy, finished her daughter's coat. Uh, and Maggie sent us a picture from Barbados. Yeah. Wearing her ruffle dress. Yeah, Maggie. <laughs> I don't suppose Maggie's joining us. Wasn't well gel. On the beach. Wasn't well gel. Oh, nah. yeah, she'll be on the beach. <laughs> she'll be laying on a beach in, um, in Barbados. Right, in Barbados, yes, she was. Oh, hi, Sue. How are you? Thanks for popping in. I will pop in and see you on Tuesday. <laughs> That'd be good. Have a good to have a catch up. Yes, yeah, so a lovely picture of Maggie in her ruffle dress in Barbados. With a beautiful hat. Oh, Susan loved the corset workshop. Oh yes, do you like you finished yours, didn't you? I think Su Susan nearly finished hers on the day as well. Just had the bottom bit binding to put on. It was good, wasn't it, Susan? It's such a good fun thing to make a corset. 
So you've been very busy. You've all been very busy. What else have we seen in the news then? I did manage to get a copy of the Talco magazine. This one here, we talked briefly about it um, on the live last time. I haven't had a chance to look at it. It only came the other day, yesterday. I got it from Draper's Daughter. What was really funny, we talked about this on the Friday and lovely um, Karen uh, came to the Overlooker class on the Saturday and she brought this in to show us and she hadn't even seen us on the live talking about it. Well, wow. but it's all so in tune. Yes, her husband bought it for us a Christmas present. I thought it was a really nice present because it is quite expensive. Oh, Sue said she loved the raffle dress as well. Wasn't it beautiful, Sue? I'm looking forward to seeing you on Tuesday for a catch-up. So it has got, this um, Talco magazine has got lots of patterns in it, but they are all overlaid. I don't know if you can see that, but they're all overlaid. So you oh, can trace them. Oh, God. And work out which nightmare. ones are which. And, uh, yeah. That looks like a headache. You never, if you sit, never use the Birder pattern magazines, you will... Um, and didn't Deer and Doe do their PDFs like that? They for did, a while? yes. But it is a nice magazine. It's very nicely produced. It's on very uh, nice paper. It's almost like a book, actually. Yeah, it? it is. It looks like a book. It is. Um, oh, it's got book reviews and all sorts of things. I'm going to take it home with me and read it this week. It's weekend. huge. Yeah, it's quite weighty. How much was that? It was £24. That is quite a lot, but yeah, it is massive. But if you think it, it's really big. Yeah, it is big. Oh, Sally said she bought the Mrs. Maisel book. Now, you may notice this behind me. This is, <laughs> this is my latest book that I bought, as well as the <laughs> magazine. I couldn't resist this. This is weighty. This is madly marvellous, the costumes of the marvellous Mrs. Maisel. Um, and Sally spotted it in the sewing room last week. And it's, um, it's by the, uh, costume, the costume designer from the marvellous Mrs. Maisel. If you've watched it, you'll know... Uh, how wonderful and it goes from the sketches the development lots of photographs of all the um beautiful garments in them isn't it lovely sally i bet you've loved it uh, claire's saying at least it's in english i'm trying to trace one from a japanese pattern book oh lord oh yes that that's sounds true. So very you know, tricky. yeah the japanese like the drake drake books their patterns are overlaid as well aren't they um i was hoping that they may be maybe if it's really popular they might start to do them as a downloadable pattern so you can download them and get them printed uh, like named clothing did with their books but um yeah so far no news on that but if anyone makes a pattern i haven't had a chance to think about making a pattern from here yet but it will be interesting to see how they come up esther was saying she quite liked that there's a jumpsuit in here she quite liked oh, claire saying the trick is to use a highlighter for the lines you need exactly you do have to go over the one you really want so the other thing that will be out uh, out this week is the Makers Atelier magazine, another good quality magazine. This is the Spring 22, which is all about accessories. Uh, and it's got really great articles in it about um, uh, hats, bags, gloves, um, all sorts of good stuff in here. Um, I just did a little article about, uh, you probably see, I think we did a recording actually of the little zip bag um, Added zip bag, so it's a little, yes, this one here. It's my little feature in this one. So it's as good as ever, and the free pattern for the little rucksack there is inside. So it looks like a really nice rucksack. Rock yeah, it is. She's made it in, in a leather. Ah, oh, I really want to make that. Yeah. That would look nice in a Merchant and Mills oil skin as well, wouldn't it? It would, actually. It would look so nice as yes. oil skin. But like one of those ones that creases and gets yeah, more and more distressed. Sort of, that sort of heavyweight one. Yeah. Like, um, that lovely red one that Sally made yeah, exactly. her Kelly Anorak from. It would look really lovely. Yeah. That's a nice one, actually, because mm. some of them are too pockety and too zippy. And... Exactly. It is unlined, because we had a quick look at it, because remember, Sue, the one that Sue teaches is, um, the, Sue, the one that Sue teaches is a lined bag. This is an unlined one, so it works very well with things like leather. Uh, mm. But you could make it in a can, heavy canvas or something like that. And once again, it's got lots of, this magazine is great, because it gives you lots of different ideas for things to do. Um, France is in the magazine. Yes. France is yes. in the magazine. Well, you know, it's very hard, you know, during lockdown. Oh, did you see Frances's jacket the other day? She's made She's the peacoat in, in leather. In leather. It yes. was beautiful. Yeah. I have I a feeling that she's sneakily watching us right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about your magazine. Talking, talking about your Frances. Uh, yeah, so... Um, Susan wants to do the millinery course now and make the smaller bag. It's great, isn't it? This is about the millinery class. It's about the millinery course. Oh, yeah. The hat making class. The French one. 
Uh, I don't know which one it is in here. There's actually. one in the I'm south of France, about. and you can go to the south of France for a week and make a felt hat. <laughs> I really want to do that. Yeah, look at those, look at those beautiful hats there, look. Gorgeous. Anyway, you have to buy it to see the rest of it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll show you all of it, and that'll be no good, will it? So those are my oh, three Francis says hello. Oh, <laughs> Francis. <laughs> we need to have a chat about the retreat, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we need do. To come to Brighton and have lunch one day, so we'll make a plan to come over. Um, yeah, so um, three great things I've, I've been looking at this week. Meg's Tillian magazine, the Talco magazine, and the Mar Madly Marvellous book. But if you, if you do come here, you can have a look at this here. It's on the, it'll be on the stand here, so... No spoilers. <laughs> no, no spoilers of the magazines. That's enough. That's just to whet your appetite. Taco is great, but like I say, really, it's it's, um, it's expensive, but uh, quite nice quality. Like we said, we always said, there's not many sewing magazines that we How like. How many do they do a year? I don't know, but this one says winter twenty one. Oh, so it's so seasonal. That was, yeah, so that's a. Yeah, I don't know. Francis says so. we do. So we do need what to meet Sue, up. Sue Castle, no, in the Cotswolds. No, the Cotswolds. I don't know where that is. Oh, the the hat, the, the hats class oh, is in the Cotswolds. The oh, is. excellent. Thank you, Susan. I haven't read, I have no chance to read it. You know, <laughs> well, that's I'm what called, you're doing this weekend, sorry, isn't it? And I'm taking these home this weekend to read them. <laughs> so that's even read your magazine. <laughs> it's great. Okay, so that's what I've seen. What else have I got? Um... We've had big haberdashery orders. All our haberdashery is really stocked up now. We've got loads of more of the overlocking threads and the variegated overlocking threads. All the prim stand. It's looking lovely. There's lots, lots of... more patterns on the website as well because some yep. of them weren't on. So lots of closet core. Lots of patterns. Merch and Mills Mills patterns. patterns. Uh, the, the Nipad threaded needle cases are back in stock. You remember we had these before. Uh, not a threaded they... needle case. Threaded needle. It's no, not a threaded needle. <laughs> I've got to thinking of the clover. The dome, yeah, the this dome. is a, not the dome threaded needle case. This is the uh, for used sewing machine needles. So when you're changing your sewing machine needles, you don't want to put them back in the case because the cases should have new needles in. So this should be for ones that you've just taken out and changed over. So it's got all the different types of needles on it and also um, the sizes as well. So you can put your needles in there once you've taken them out of your machine. And um, obviously we always uh, suggest the or recommend the Schmetz needles because they're colour coded. Sally said she's had a nightmare with her Devore that the pattern oh. was a metre fifth, one and a half metre short of what she needed. Oh. So she's going to have to fudge it. Oh, we you know we could make that work, Sally. Bring it in on Monday morning. For was the, the fabric narrower, maybe? Might be. Might have had a big border on it. It had to be quite a big border. Maybe, yeah, bring it on on Monday for the tutorial, Sally. We'll have a look. Um, the pattern was, might have had a pattern short, but it was fine. We'll make it work. Oh, Janet's saying, Janet's saying she's got an order on the go. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, so have a look. Everything's back in stock, including the mic pads. Fabric was narrower by two inches. Oh, that shouldn't make much difference, no, should it? it two inches. But it can because the pattern piece, it was for like a sort of long, dusty coat, but it was quite a big, wide pattern piece. Mm. So, because uh, it had uh, seams, I can't remember that, but I know it had seams in other places. Uh, I love this. It's really good, really useful tool. Um, so that's everything on there on my list. Other news: Cloth House sent a very interesting email out. They have seersucker in stock. We often ask if we get asked for seersucker, and we also well, the nearest really is things like double gauze. But Cloth House have got some really beautiful cotton seersucker. It's only 115 wide, and it's 16 pound a meter. Very narrow, but it's beautiful. They've got five colours. So if you've been looking for seersucker to make summer dresses, I have been. Looking yeah, for seersucker it's one of those things years. that you don't see very often. Um, Not in lots of colours. You don't. You often get yeah. it in just white. And cloth has got really beautiful. They, those, mm. They're normal sort of muted colours. Really nice, but it is narrow, like I say. So make make sure you notice that. Um, oh, oh, the fact it's not being delivered till Monday afternoon. Oh, never mind, Sally. We'll be able to work it out. So annoying. We'll just we'll do a design detail. That's what we'll do. We'll make a design detail with it. Um, and the other thing, because this week was the, um, I put up on the Players Threads page, was the Chanel Haute Couture show. Lots of lovely Linton inspiration. <laughs> nice things to make your couture jacket on the sew along. You could make something nice, get your inspiration from there. I always think it's nice because they show the Linton fabrics and they are 
when you see them when you see people walking wearing them they sort of really drape well and they're uh, mm. really lovely not so sure about the that. horse huh yeah the horse was unusual but then why not and they got in some trouble did they peter oh. had gone oh, a bit okay. angry yeah, shouldn't, be, <laughs> shouldn't be these animals in uh, fashion shows but uh, anyway, oh, hello Julia. Look. Julia's here on Instagram. Oh, hi Julia. How are you? Belated hi, she says. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, have a look at the uh, couture, at the um, Chanel show. He says lots of lovely Linton inspiration. Um, so that is all my news. Did you have any other news apart from the things you're talking about? Any other sort of fabrics shops you've seen? Mm. Doing offers, not many. I think a lot of uh, January sales tend to be early January, don't they? So I haven't seen any. Yeah, I did so. get a nice. Um, loyalty voucher from Sherwoods for oh, spending yes. money with them last year mm. I don't know if any of the rest of you got that as well it was quite a nice I haven't spent it it's probably not gone out of time now mm. no I don't think so uh, Project Runway I'm still behind so I oh. can't really talk about that I'm afraid Janet and I uh, tried to talk about that on Monday and you I shouted, shouted down the you. corridor <laughs> I know oh um, oh yeah she was um, is it her own she horse? was Grace Kelly's granddaughter Monegasque royalty. Yeah. I wonder she was, if it was Grace her, Kelly's her own horse. Okay. granddaughter. Sue's saying, Do we fancy Harvey and Huggers and Punk costume? Well, mm. we talk about it on Tuesday. <laughs> We're very busy this year. We've <laughs> <laughs> got a lot going on this year. So, um, so th yes, that's uh, really beautiful things on there anyway. What else were I talking about before I got to this? Sally, no voucher here probably shows how much you spent. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Oh no, we only did one order. Yeah, we did one order between us, didn't we? I think yeah. when they had an offer on. Yeah, yeah, most of that. I think has anyone else seen any offers? I think um, Stitch Fabric, which are Mr. Rosenbergs, they had a very good offer, um, uh, but I think it's finished now. I think they had a fantastic sale offer. What is Jilly saying? Caroli. Is that the name of the daughter? Of the or the horse? Yes, yeah, she's a oh, dressage rider. Right yeah, so she's probably her own horse, and then they just gave her a Chanel jacket to wear. I love it. I hope she got to keep uh, it. Suzanne had one, but I'm not buying any fabric. No, I'm not buying any fabric, apart from when we went to Linton. I said I wasn't going to buy any fabric. And then I go into Victoria's, she's got new stuff. And we go to yeah. Linton, and they've got these. <gasps> Victoria's got things. the most beautiful. Oh, Suzanne, I thought of you. I might, <laughs> I might actually have to go and get it because. Mm. And Cynthia also is going to love this. Some new fabrics down at uh, Bloomsbury Square this week. Um, yeah, I, I, I keep thinking I'm not going to buy it. I haven't got time to make it. I have trouble. I keep getting these piles of fabrics, but that's what we're all like, isn't it? It's a separate hobby, buying fabric. Yeah. So uh, Bloomsbury Square have got some new colours in their silk velvet. So if you've it's a silk viscose mix, but the top silk. one is actually that cerise pink. It's like yes. your, it's like the double crepe. It's colour. the same colour as the double crepe you made your dress from, or the the colour that Cynthia made her coat from. Yeah, it's not showing very well on camera, but it's divine. Yes, yeah, so, but if you know, yes, if you know um, Cynthia's coat and uh, Suzanne's dress, Suzanne's dress, and also they've got this lovely rusty gold, well, musty, like ochre colour, yeah, yeah ochre colour as well in silk velvet. How lovely is that? Beautiful. What other colours have they got in this? We've got purple. Have uh, we got purple, purple. We've got forest green. And got a deep red, but it does come in about fifteen different colours. It's just obvious reasons can yes. only get one roll now and again <laughs> i'll leave it on the table because then when you bring the camera in you'll be able to see yeah it. you'll probably we'll see it better yeah Sharon mm. says the city have got what looks like a gag linen range called sorrento oh that's interesting where mm. one could get it in the uk uh tasuti fabrics i think tasuti fabrics are only available from tasuti but um i don't know um, I'd have to see. I'd have to have a look at it and see what it looks like, and then uh, see if we can work out anywhere in the UK. Is that fab linen <laughs> instead of gag? Is that fab linen instead of gag linen? <laughs> if you're just looking for a fab linen, I would say Bloomsbury Square. <laughs> they have what she calls her Rebecca linen, which is a really beautiful linen, which is a sort of dress and trouser weight linen. Really nice. So have a look at Rebecca linen. Uh, on Bloomsbury Square. Does she, what's the other name? She's got another one that's not Rebecca. There's another one that's very similar, there's, isn't there? There's a lot. There's, there's another one linen. called Bex mm. Linen, which comes in like four different colours. There's an enzyme washed, which is really that's, nice. That's nice. Lots of colours. Enzyme washed. She's I got loads now. Jumpsuit from the enzyme washed one. 
Yeah, she's got some really nice linens. The Rebecca linen was the original one, which is really lovely. Mm. So I'm going to do a little demo while we're chatting. Uh, so the demo I thought today, because we, we I did copy it, make it today, and there was a few ladies putting zips in to trousers and things. And I was thinking that when we do um, trouser zips, we do the fly zip, we always put in a zip guard. And often we put, um, a zip guard is a very useful thing, especially in trouser zips. So a zip guard, let me just get a sample to show you. Um, so if this is a, a trouser zip here, when you open the trouser zip, you have what's called the zip guard, which is this bit behind, and that's a separate piece that you put in. And we always do that with a trouser zip, but you can do it with any zip that you put in. So I thought I'd just uh, do a, a quick demo of putting a zip guard, or making a zip guard and putting in a concealed zip, just so you can see. An option. Would you, I was thinking about this, because mm -hmm. on the trousers, obviously the fly and everything is hiding the bulk of it. So would it add bulk if a it was a very bit, fitted dress? A little bit. If it was very fitted, I would. You could do it narrow though. You can do it very yeah, narrow. Just I wouldn't do anything very fitted. I've done it on a skirt. So okay. I'll show you my. I'll just get my samples up here. So this is my um, pink wool skirt. Which is here. This is an invisible zip. It's not particularly bulky, but when I open the zip, there's a zip guard. So it just stops your clothes getting caught in the zip. So that's what I'm, I'm going to just quickly show you how to make one of those, especially on a garment where you have a facing. This is going to be right in front of your face. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so sorry. All, all sorts of samples here. So I'm going to put, move my samples out for that. So you really want your zip card, when you're cutting your fabric, um, I'm just going to turn this over so you can see a bit more please. You need your fabric to be, um, a, your piece to be, generally I do it about 8 centimetres wide, people who come to my class will know, 8 centimetres wide by about 3 centimetres longer than your zip. You need two pieces of fabric. Um, you don't have to do it, actually you don't have to do it this wide for the um, one behind your concealed zip. You can just do it five centimetres wide if you wanted to. So once you start doing them. Oops, sorry everybody, I just dropped the camera. Just don't drop the camera. <laughs> uh, and I would just curve off the end. This is also a really nice opportunity to put a contrast fabric behind your zip. Now, when you are um, when you're going to when you're putting a facing in, when you're putting a waistband in, you can leave these edges raw and just stitch down the curved edge. But if you're putting it in, you've got a facing going in. You need to have this as a neatened edge. So I'm going to stitch this on the machine. So I cut that two pieces of fabric that are about eight centimeters wide and a bit longer than the zip. Jill is asking which scissors are you using? Oh, these are just little um, uh, the prim embroidery scissors. They're called embroidery scissors. They're, embroidery they're scissors. Yeah, but they're just the little short scissors. They're really good because they're Kai blades. Kai are Super really sharp. Good. Super sharp. And they're quite, so I use them for cutting fabric as well because they are just nice for little, little quick projects. So I'm just going to, I'm going to stitch this with a narrow seam, so a quarter inch seam. Now, of course, you could use a quarter inch foot. But if you haven't got your quarter inch foot with you, like me, <laughs> if you move your needle over to 5.5 and then line the fabric up to the edge of the foot, that will give you a nice quarter inch seam. I was talking about that today on the class. Um, having a machine where you can move your needle is really helpful because when you're sewing, the most important thing, the best way to, to sew a straight line is to not look at the needle. So you want to be able to line the fabric up with something. So if you can't line it up with the edge of the foot or one of these gauges, um, then you, an option is to line it up with the edge of the foot and move the needle to give you the correct seam allowance. So that's just a useful thing to think about. Uh, yes, Suzanne, eight centimetres wide. Yeah.
by three centimetres longer than your zip. It has been known in my classes before. I've done that. To cut your piece eight centimetres by three centimetres, which is not big enough. Oh, I haven't done that. <laughs> I haven't done that, but I have done it too small. <laughs> eight centimetres wide by three centimetres longer than your zip. I've done it too small a few times. I don't even know how I've done it. <laughs> it's not measuring properly. Obviously got caught on the um, hook. I'll fix this one. So I'm just going to go around. Okay. So we've got a stitch across the top and then down and around the curve. So it's one of those things that we often don't think about because it's not in the not mentioned in the patterns. It's a little extra thing that you could think about when you're making your garments. Because actually, I should put one on the skirt I'm wearing. Because I often wear. I've got this very silky shirt on from this very like silky viscose. Um, so when I go through the zip, it often wants to catch in the zip. I've got an invisible zip in the back. But this really helps. So just taking some notches out of the curve, and I'm going to trim off the corner, and then turn it the right way out. Oh, hi Sue. Sue Cotton's here. Hi Sue. I did bring myself a loop um, through. Yes, there it is. So turn this through and then push out the corner. And you would give this a press if you had your iron set up. <laughs> we didn't have time today, so we were running around after the class. So there we go. So you would um, give that a press and then you could neaten this edge hi Jackie with an overlocker or you could do a zigzag or you could use the uh, over edge stitch on the machine if you had the foot with you which edge or the long edge the long edge yeah this edge here mm -hmm. um, so what you're going to do then is think about your invisible zip here You can just place this. I'm going to actually just stitch those raw edges together because I'm, I'm, I haven't got my overlocker set up to do it, but I want to stitch those raw edges together just to stop them from moving about. I'm just going to stitch those. So you then place this underneath your zip, open up your zip and place it underneath, like that. And you want to drop the, because you're needing this edge here, drop it down by whatever your seam allowance is. So if it's one and a half centimetres, drop it down by one and a half centimetres. And then you're going to measure, well it depends on how big you want your basin to do, but I normally do about three centimetres. Measure three centimetres from the teeth of your zip and put some pins in right on the edge just to hold it in place. Like that. Where that pink thread's come from. So measure all the way down, make sure you've got it nice and straight, and then lift up the front of your garment here. And you can sew this, okay, you can sew the um, zip guard to the seam allowance. So you can repin it if you want to, but normally I find I don't need to. Just stitch it in place. There we go. You put the zipper foot on at that point, would it make it easier? It would make it easier for that bottom bit where the zipper Yeah. Is. There we go. And then you can.
that's your zip guard all held in place. And then when you put your facing on, your facing will go across the top there, be level with your zip guard. I'm just trim that thread because that looks a bit messy, doesn't it? So you could do that on any of your um, on any of your zips you put in. It could go into a lap zip, it could go into a um, centered zip, but this one is in a concealed zip. What I've done on my pink skirt, so I'll just show, it's really simple, isn't it? <laughs> to do, it makes such a difference. That will stop your um, clothes catching. What I've done on my pink one, which I'll just show you while you've got the camera in here. So here we go, this is my lined skirt. So actually my zip guard is, I put did it in wool on this side and I did it on lining on that side. So that helps with bulk as well. Um, and then I just hand stitched the lining to the zip guard there. But also what I did is I put a little um, covered press stud. So I covered a press stud in the lining fabric so that that will stay in place. And it won't sort of flap about inside the, inside the skirt. So that's another little nice finish to do. Hold it in place. So there you go, adding a zip card to any zip. Well, there you go. I hope that was helpful. Catherine says one of those super ideas. <laughs> Oh, yeah, most, sorry, most unless you're doing a trouser zip, and most uh, most zips don't include that as an idea. So it's something you need to think about. Make yourself a pattern, and then uh, and you can make one all of your zips, and then your shirts won't get caught. My my, I've got a grey skirt which I've got a zip guard in. It makes all the difference. It's got a little press stub, and this one, which this one doesn't fit me anymore um, at the moment, I should say. Uh, but yeah, it just makes all the difference having that little press stud there to stop the, the zip guard folding back on, on itself as well. That's with the facing. If you've got a waistband, it wouldn't matter. But if you like a trouser one, it would hold it in place. So there you go. Thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> Suzanne said, very interesting. What? So um, just before Amy comes in, one thing I did want to show you, I just realised it's on the floor down here. I did stick it on the table earlier, maybe because that's too big to have on the table. It was a bit ridiculous. Prim have bought out a replacement sewing, sorry, replacement sewing box. I think um, you might see a picture of these. We do have these coming in, so they're to pre-order at the moment. We've ordered a whole lot for, we're doing a couple of shows this year. So we've ordered some of these uh, for the show, so we have got them on special offer. They're recommended retail is £120, and we've got them for £79.95 available to pre-order only so they are a beautiful um nylon case and this is let me turn this around so you can see look at this really big amazing this space this lifts out as well so you could put this on your sewing desk and put the bag down there is a carry handle as well so this is they um they had lovely black uh leather like cases with zips which i've a lot of people, a lot of people come here may have seen them uh, in red or black, but they've discontinued those. And this has the same inside, and then this lovely. It's actually strong, bigger, isn't it? This is bigger because it's, it's slightly narrower, but it's longer. Yeah. It's got a nice mesh with zip here, so more storage. And um, and it's got oh, it's got another zip here. I it's really it's nice and it's substantial. Zip back there. It's got yeah, and it's got a really nice big um, shoulder strap that it has. hooks on as well. Yeah. So you can carry it on your shoulder. Thank you, Ruth, for the brilliant zip technique. And then once you've done that, you can also securely secure this here as well, so it just stops it from coming apart. So there you go. They those are available to pre-order, um, and then we'll have them on the special price for now. But because all, as with all print things, they come from Germany, so things are, are going up as we speak. So there you go. New sewing bags available. Aren't they lovely? I'm going to put it down this side because Amy's going to come in now. I am. Aren't you, Amy? I need you to move over a little bit first, please. I'll move my sample to this. Oh, I can't move over. I've got too much stuff here. Better? Yeah. Behind the sewing machine. I do show the pink velvet. They see the pink velvet in the. Oh, I think so. It's sort of glimmering in the corner. Yeah. 
I want I want something in the yellow. The mustard colour. Lovely, isn't it? Coming in with my trolley. Oh, this is actually trolley. It's still dry January, isn't it? It is still it dry. It is still January. dry January. A few more days. Woo! Hello, we'll be back. How are you there? Good. We're very busy. Yeah, it's busy been a bit anyway. crazy, my end. I've been locked in the office. Uh, doing much admin. Yes, lots of admin. Quite a few of you will have had emails and things from me. Um, yeah, lots of news. Mm. Lots of stuff going on. Where to start? Where to start? Uh, well, let's start month by month. So we are... Have to dog. I'll have to go. <laughs> Poor to dog go. is cross-legged. Oh, okay. Thanks, Ruth. Bye, Ruth. Yes, so Bright and Free in March is sold out. Um, Thank you, Julie. <laughs> um, Brighton Retreat in March is sold out but then we are, have added a show in so yeah. we're doing two shows in March before the Brighton Retreat and we're going to crazy one of them we have a day one day off between yeah. show and retreat um, we're so well organized we're so well organized we will be so well organized <laughs> it's my February gone mm. so we're going to be at Stitch Festival first week of March I think it's the first second third off on mm. my head um, fourth, fifth, third, Sunday, Sunday, that week. Sunday Thurs, to the sixth. Thursday to the Sunday. Yeah. That week. <laughs> we have to be, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> so we're going to have a stand and mum will be teaching mm -hmm. and then we have a week off and then it's Sewing for Pleasure in Birmingham at the yeah. NEC, which we haven't done before, but we thought, why not? Let's go for it. So we're yep. going to have a stand and mum's going to be teaching. We're doing a few workshops. As well. So if you often go to Sewing for Pleasure instead, mm -hmm. then we will be there. Come and say hello. Not help, as it says in the newsletter. Not help, hello. So if you read the newsletter, it's not come and say help. It's no. come and say hello. And yeah. if you didn't notice that, then you clearly didn't read the no, newsletter. Exactly. <laughs> well, we were doing the newsletter in the car, and I had in Carlisle. We were. So it might have been going on a bump. Yeah. But there was um, also a, an error in this tile. Yes, all right. No one's noticed that one either, Never so that's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we have... Makes Atelier Retreat in April. There is one place left. One place just come open. Mm. Um, if anybody wanted to join the Makes Atelier Retreat in That's April fun. in Brighton. Um, in May is the Couture Retreat, which we have just released some spaces because after visiting them, we found their beautiful cottages in the grounds. Mm. So I'm, I have listed one cottage is suitable for two friends. Um, or mother daughter or whatever you want sharing. two people sharing basically <laughs> um and that is a cottage in the grounds and then there is another one bedroom that i'm about to release this weekend as mm. well keep an eye out for that and then the cruise the cruise oh totness this year is sold out mm -hmm. but we have released dates for next year march brighton retreat and totness november retreat Spaces are already filling up. Mm. So if you know you're definitely going to want to join us on either of those retreats next year, I would recommend putting your deposit down now. And the cruise has finally announced its dates for mm. 2023, which again is already filling up. So yes. if, if you've been thinking, oh, I'd quite like to go on that cruise they're all talking about, mm. you might want to pop me an email and get, find out about it because again, spaces are filling up on that. A lot's going on. <sighs> <laughs> like a news bulletin. <laughs> I thought that what we were doing the newsletter on. on yeah. Like, oh, there's so much news. So much news. Yeah. Uh, so half the time I'm very thirsty. Yes. What have we got? So we're going to have a virgin pina colada. Oh, I love pina colada. You do love pina mm -hmm. colada. And um, I thought this was a good one because it doesn't require too many ingredients. And it's probably things that most of us might have in the cupboard. Um, yeah, but it also can be alcoholic because you can just add rum mm. um oh joe was telling me about this claire what's that that you had a great cocktail called the mouthy sunset yeah absolutely i'll try did you take a picture of the recipe <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have a chat about that yeah. okay so for pina coladas vary from bartender to bartender on what they like to put in it um Obviously, traditionally it would be with rum, so you could mm -hmm. just take this recipe and add a double shot of rum. Oh, she did take a picture of the Oh, good. Very good, there. Yeah. <laughs> then, yes, of course. <laughs> so, in a shaker, pop some ice. Now, 
you could do this in a blender with some frozen pineapple, but I don't have a blender or frozen pineapple, so I'm just going to use pineapple juice, so it'll be a little bit sweeter. So if you don't like it too sweet, then do it with some frozen mm. pineapple, and then you can cut out half the ice and do it in a blender, it'll be nice. Like a slush puppy. A bit like a slush puppy. Mm. Pineapple slush puppy. We've so got an ice crusher at home, haven't we? Actually, we could do it with that. Put pineapple into an ice crusher. Oh, no, that not. would be the on one of the stickiest mess. <laughs> I could maybe bring the Nutribullet. Oh yeah, we it would work that. in a Nutribullet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to do per person mm. with pineapple juice a hundred mils of pineapple juice per person. So very pineapple. -y. If you were going to do it with pineapple, I would say about half a pineapple per person. Um, obviously in chunks leave the outside off. Then we want some coconut milk. My tin was a little bit tricky to get open so I had to, I've got a bit of the cream but it's going to be mostly milk so I'm just going to try and get some of the cream out because it's going to make it nice. Uh, but we want uh, a double shot per person of this. So it's quite a bit. I don't know if this is going to yeah. And actually, if you like things more less sweet, then add more coconut milk. Mm. You can kind of with this one do it to your own taste. Because and also uh, some maple syrup, just to take out any bitterness. So just a teaspoon. Mm. <laughs> that shoot out. That shot out across the table. I thought it was going to get your laptop. So a teaspoon of maple syrup. And that is it. And then we're going to shake it. <laughs> There's a oh. bit of a globular on the thing. Give it a nice hard shake because if you do have any coconut cream from the tin, you want to get it all mixed up. And then we're going to we're going to have a refined pina colada oh, yeah. in a nice glass. And I'm going to double shake it just in case any of that cream didn't, you don't want like blobs of coconut cream on the, on the drink. It looks just like a pina colada. It does. Some pina, sometimes pina coladas just look white, don't they? Yeah, they and good. that means they've got a lot of cream in. Yeah. Because some bartenders will put actual double cream in a mm. pina colada which you can absolutely do if you like so there we go and then you would just get some fresh pineapple and sort of rest it on there oh, oh, oh. <laughs> or fall it in fall, in fall it in fall, you know what I mean <laughs> it's been a very long week and then also if you wanted it really sweet you could just drizzle some grenadine and it would all sink to the bottom and you get a nice little pink hue in the bottom. Oh, that'd be nice. Or you could use a glacé cherry also. Uh, oh, good. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Susan put Love the all these people getting shaker. rose oil frosting shakers. So there we oh, go. Oh, that's lovely. Cheers. 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 Mm. Oh, I like that. Mm. I'm nice. keep pineapple juice and coconut milk. <laughs> so nice. If you were doing that as a with alcohol, how much rum would you put in? A double shot. Double shot. Yeah, yeah. fifty mils. Yeah, you could do um, fifty mils. Uh, sorry, twenty five mils of like Bacardi or a gold rum if you prefer, and then the other half with Malibu. Oh. So you could do because it's Malibu is a coconut rum, so you mm -hmm. could do that. You could mm -hmm. mix it up if you want it really coconutty. That's nice. Otherwise, a double shot of gold or white rum, whichever mm. you preferred. Or you could do a spice rum, like a Captain Morgan spice. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah, it's go. lovely. It's a nice drink. Very refreshing. Mm -hmm. Good for us. <laughs> you can make it in jugs too. Mm. It's a good one for a jug. You mm. can just keep pouring it. That's lovely. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. I know it's a bit summery for a January day, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Cocktails are fun any summer. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So cheers Thank everybody. Oh, well, cheers Janet. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. It's really lovely. Hmm. Okay. Back to the alcohol we'll be back on you. Yeah. Next time we'll be back on you. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well done to anybody that has done dry January. I had one cheat. Mm. Well, we're in oh, we're in Carlisle. Yeah. Which is fair enough. Exactly, you can dream of being on the beach. It does smell like beachy. Well, we were off the Plaza Prosecco, we? No, we were in drinking this. Oh, this, yeah. Lovely. Yes, well, we can drink that Barbados beach is like where Maggie is. Yeah, but she's <laughs> drinking pina coladas. Yeah, Maggie, 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 and we'll be back same time in two weeks. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.